Hello, Bridge. The £91 million, £126 million, £145 million structure cost £148 million to build and it opened in September of 2024, only one year behind schedule. It's known as the Gullwing Bridge and it bridges you over Lake Lothing, which isn't as glamorous as it sounds because it's part of a harbour found in Lowestoft in Suffolk. Some describe Lowestoft as a seaside resort. It isn't. The idea of building a bridge in Lowestoft has been on the card since 1918. After 102 years of feasibility studies and meetings, they'd almost started. But why does Lowestoft need a bridge? The problem with Lowestoft is that the lake and harbour effectively divide the town into two sections and there's no easy way around. In the old days this was remedied by building two bridges on either side of the town but as time has gone on and with traffic increasing both on land and on water these bridges became pinch points, particularly the eastern bridge. Initially it was a swing bridge and it took ages to open for boats and once they passed through it would then take ages to reopen to road traffic. Whilst waiting for that the road traffic of course builds up and this was happening multiple times a day with no signs of stopping. By the 1970s it was all getting rather silly and the bridge was slowing everyone down so the decision was made to replace it with a bascule bridge which would be much faster in operation and hopefully speed things up. That bridge is still in place today and whilst it's worked for a bit, the same problem arose as traffic levels continued to increase. The time taken to raise and lower the bridge was causing massive tailbacks and everyone was back at the start. And then they remembered there was that idea of a third bridge, first thought of in 1918. Maybe it was about time to get around to sorting that. But shit, bit of an issue, where do you put the bridge? Over the years, Lowestoft has expanded to the point where you've got little to no space. But despite this, three options were considered for a new bridge, none of which ended up being ideal. So that was a waste of feasibility study money. In the end, they settled on this plan. Presumably it was the cheapest way to go about things and work began in 2021 on the Gullwing Bridge. Let's take a look. At 343 metres long and with a maximum height of 62 metres, it's certainly not the largest of bridges, but it is the largest bridge of its type, in the world apparently, that type being a rolling bascule bridge with massive concrete wing things. Those wing things were constructed in the Netherlands and basically they're part of the movable road deck that will raise up and down to allow boats to pass. It was constructed as one piece and loaded onto a barge before being shipped across the North Sea where it would then be lifted into position using a massive crane. The wing things known as J-beams are made out of concrete and weigh over 380 tonnes acting as the bridge's counterweights. The way the bridge works is actually rather simple and it's based around the Schertzer rolling lift bridge concept named after its inventor William Schertzer who came up with the idea in 1893. Rather than rotate around an axle or via some sort of gearing system, the bridge design rolls or pivots the bridge deck using a large counterweight along a track and the rolling design vastly reduces the friction exerted on the bridge components with the added benefit of being a simple mechanism that's cheaper to construct and one that requires less maintenance. The Gullwing Bridge employs the same idea but simplifies things further by utilising a single hydraulic ram to do the heavy lifting. On early bridges of this type there would have been steam engines, cable systems and a whole host of other stuff just to lift the bridge deck but today we don't need any of that and instead the bridge's lifting system can be installed directly underneath the deck and hidden from view. As a result the bridge achieves a fairly minimalist design. What do you reckon? Do you like it? I'll tell you what's not very good, the bridge's control tower. It too is made of concrete, but I don't actually think they finished it yet, unless they were going for that Berlin Wall watchtower sort of look. In that case, nailed it. As for why it was over budget, well, you know, just Brexit, Covid, supply costs, £25 million loan to the local council for contingency. I'm not sure where that went. And as for why it was a year overdue, well, let's be fair, it's a very difficult structure to manufacture. And since it was mostly constructed overseas and then shipped in large complete sections, you can imagine that this is no simple task. And it isn't. Yet our overseas friends in Belgium and the Netherlands delivered everything on time, no problem. The reason the whole thing was delayed was because of this small roundabout and bit of linking road. Why? Well, you know, just Brexit, Covid, supply costs, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why it was delayed, but it was, and it held up the opening of the bridge for a year because we're crap. But no bother, it's open now, and we can enjoy its bridgey delights for many years to come. It's got a design life of 120 years, so 50, but that'll do, won't it? Hopefully, it also solves Lowestoft's traffic problems as per the plan, but only time will tell. Thanks for watching.